let's get started on today's class. So, okay, so uh, in the previous class, so we learned about how to design a factory bench. Uh, so, actually, uh, as, as I mentioned, the test bench is required for verifying our design. Okay? So, so, we are so we using the uh, using HDL, the hardware description languages. So we can design hardware, and then our our design code or our design module will be synthesized. So it means that our design will be translated into real hardware module, and then before uh, synthesizing our design module, then we need to <coughs> we need to verify our design, right? <laughs> Volume is okay. Is it okay? Is it, the volume is okay. Ah, uh ah. -huh. Okay, so okay. Uh, so for this uh, verification process, and we need to design actually test bench. So test bench is the uh, specify specific module for verifying our, our code design, and then you need to uh, remember that. The test bench is not synthesizable. So we don't need to consider synthesis for designing test bench. Okay, so we can, it means that we can uh, write a test bench code like, like the uh, normal software code, okay? Because it's, it will not be synthesized. So, Usually, we uh, test bench includes uh, our code design, and then actually, we usually use the, this model. So, test bench includes the code, yeah, code, our code design, and then test bench does not include any input or output codes. So, actually, the signals are generated inside of the test bench module, and then we generate the signals are even to the input or input codes of the our code design and then we can monitor the output output signals. So actually the output signals are delivered to the internal signals of the test bench. Okay. So because so we are learning about the system variable so all our data type usually we use the uh, logic data type right but Actually, if we use the value, then we can use the web or wire data type. So usually, for the input stimulus, so in order to <coughs> generate the input stimulus, we need to use the web or wire uh, data type. For, for, for monitoring our signals, we need to use the wire data type. So it's a, it's a just for value, but in the system value, there is only one uh, data type for the normal normal binary signals, so it's logic, so we can use logic for input to our output signals. And then we learn how to design the test bench code. And then I show the, the three uh, different examples. So, and then I also mentioned that we need to, we need to, uh, <coughs> we need to design the test bench, uh, efficiently. So it means that actually we can design a simple test bench like this and then so we can just uh, generate the input stimulus. So it's, it's the, the group of input signal and then we can monitor the output signals in the, using the waveform. But I said that this is not efficient because you need to just see the each waveform. So you know, so if, if you see the wave form, it's not easy to detect the error, right? So usually, so actually in the left assignment, we just handle the several signals, you know, three or four signals, but in real design, there are many signals. So there are many uh, internal variables in the in a very low design. So actually, it's not efficient. So actually, so, so so manual verification is also required. So sometimes we need to also check the timing of our signal. But 
usually the checking the errors using mail phone is, is very difficult. Okay, it, it's not efficient because there are many, many signals uh, inside of the real design, real system payload design module. So usually we can design the uh, self-checking uh, test bench. So which means that inside of the test bench, the test bench can, can check the uh, desired output from our design module. And if the output is same to the desired value, then it's passed. But it's not equivalent to the desired output value, then we can check the error like this. Also, we can use the uh, test vector, right? So test vector uh, is the file that includes the uh, input and output signals. So by uh, reading the, these values in the test vector file, then we can uh, generate the input signals, the input stimulus, and then also we can check the desired output in the test bench. Okay, so this is the, uh, so I explained the uh, three different uh, examples of a test bench design. Okay, so I also explain about the how to generate clock. Uh, no. This is the example of, of the test bench. So, uh, in the today's lecture, uh, I will uh, briefly explain about the required system value syntax for designing a uh, test bench. Okay, so the first syntax is the time scale. Then actually I explained, I already explained about the time scale because the time, so actually this is the hardware design. So it means that we need to, this, we need to consider timing or time what delays about our design. So which means that we need to specify the unit for timing in our design, okay? Actually the time scale defined the time unit and Precision of our time. Okay, I, I believe I already explained about the time scale. Okay, so we can uh, define the time unit like this. So this is the time unit, and then F slash it. And then after the slash it, we define the precision of our time. So this is the example. It's the time unit in the one nanosecond. So which means that. If we just write a time like this, so which means this is n nanosecond. So this is the so this is the the basic unit of the, the timing inside of this module. So time scale defined by this unit, and then this is the precision. So one picosecond. So precision means that it's the the smallest uh so smallest amount of time that can be represented inside of the module. So, so it means that we can just represent the until the one picosecond uh, range in, the, in this module. So which means that this is okay, 1.001 because one picosecond is the 0, 0, 1.001 nanosecond, right? So this is the example, the time. So it means that time should be expressed within the precision range. So this is the example. So if we do this code, the time scale, the time unit is the one nanosecond and then the precision of the time is also one nanosecond. But inside of this code, I uh, define the, I use the 5.5. So and then it's incorrect, right? Why? Because five point one. So five point five is the five point five nanosecond. But I define the precision of this module time. This precision of timing in this module is the 
one nanosecond, which means that I can just represent one nanosecond unit for time, but I use the 0 0.5 nanosecond. So it's not allowed. Actually, so I I believe the system very logic that oh, this is the five nanosecond. So even though I use the 5.5 nanosecond, uh, I think I I believe the system will just ignore the 0 0.5 because the precision is the one nanosecond. Okay, so this is the time scale. And then let's see how to generate clock signal. So actually we learned about the sequential design. And then you know the sequential design requires a lock signal, right? So sequence, so usually in the digital design, actually the most digital design is a uh, sequential logic. So which means that this the design includes deep flip loss. Okay. So you know what is deep flip loss? So deep flip loss looks like this. Uh, this is the clock input. So clock is given to the clock port of the deep flip loss. And then there is a uh, D input, so data input, and then it's an output. Also, we use the receptable D flip plot. So it is because we need to in initialize the state of the our design, our digital system. Okay, so which means that we also require receptable. So usually, when we verify our design, our design requires a lock signal and a signal. Okay, and then let's see how to do So, which means that this is the uh, test bench code, it's a TB, and then this is the, our design. And then TB need to generate the clock signal like this, and then this clock signal needs to be given to the in our design module. Then how can we generate the lock signal? So this is the example. This is the method one. So if you see that this code, then uh, you can find that this is the definition. So I define the lock signal is the test. And the time scale is the one nanosecond. So this define is very similar to the define of B. Okay, so usually, the syntax of system very low is it? Uh, very similar to the syntax of C. Okay. So we can de I define plug JK on the one T is the 10. So which means that this is the clock period, right? The clock period. And what is the clock period? This is the clock signal. And then clock period is the The length, the length of the the, the time between the, this rising edge and then the next rising edge. That is the clock period. So I said I define clock of the body is the 10, so which means that this is 10. So and then also inside of the test bench code, I did de I declare the clock as logic data type. And then you can find the initial statement. So initial statement is that so it, uh, <coughs> so this is, initial statement is executed once at the beginning of simulation, right? So I explain. So I define the initial value of a clock is the zero. And you can find the forever, and then sharp. The sharp means the delay. And then so it's a clock on the one t divided by two. Then the clock is equal to inverse of clock. So what does that mean? So you can find that the so this is the forever statement. This is kind of a new statement. So forever means that it's a line. This statement may be executed repeatedly forever. Okay. That is the meaning of book forever. And then usually, so I believe you are familiar with the sharp because I frequently use a sharp symbol 
in the uh, system below. So shall we stop delay? Okay. And then uh, clock on the one T is the 10, 10 divided by 2, so 5, right? It's a 5. So what does that mean? Forever, so repeatedly extended forever. And then after five nanoseconds, right? Because the time unit is one nanosecond, the light is inverted. So when the this signal, so logic is declared. So when the clock is declared as logic type, you know, the, the initial value is actually unknown, right? But initially, I, I, I initialized the value of clock as zero. And then after five nanoseconds, so this is the five nanosecond, then the clock value is inverted. So what does that mean? It means, Initially, the, so this is the beginning of the simulation, and then the clock signal is zero, right? And then so zero, 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 zero. After five nanosecond, then clock will be inverted. So it means one, okay? And then after five nanosecond, because this is the, this is forever, so it will be repeatedly executed. And then five nanosecond, the clock signal will be also inverted so it will it will become zero right so zero one zero one zero one will be repeated forever after five nanoseconds so because the clock period is the 10 then we need to invert the clock signal every five nanoseconds right so this is the method one for uh, this is the method. So actually, I use this method uh, more frequently. So it's the same. The define is the same, and then plug is also declared as the large time, and then plug is the initialized. And then I use the always statement. But you can find that this always statement is a little bit different. So a little bit different from what we learned in the previous lecture because. The always after the always we can find chop. So actually we store uh, we observe always and then sensitivity list. But in this in this uh, code I use the always and chop symbol. So chop represents the also delay and then actually at represent the sensitivity, okay? So sharp represents delay in system value, and then that represents the, it's a sensitivity list, a sensitivity condition. So, always with that all, all right? If this condition is true, right? So it means that if the, this delay is true, then, this statement will be executed. It's the same. The plug is inverted every five nanoseconds. Okay, so this is delay. So after the already, then we can find that this is the delay condition. So every five nanoseconds, the clock signal is inverted. So this is the same meaning. So we can generate the clock signal like this. Okay, using the always and sharp, and we can define. We can generate a clock signal inside of the test bench. So also uh, we may require reset signal, right? And then this is another example for clock and reset generation. So like the previous examples, uh, we can find the clock and the app. So usually in the clock signal, T represents the period. And then F represents the frequency, right? And then frequency is the inverse of T. <laughs> right, it's obvious, right? So actually, uh, this is a book I defined 
So, and then I define the clock on the bar T inside of the fixed bench. Okay, so real is also okay. Real is the data type of this value. So it means that this is the real value, not integer. So it means it's floating point value, right? It's a similar to the floating point of C. And float, floating point is the float and C. So I we can uh calculate the clock period like this. Okay. Actually, the hundred means the hundred megahertz, right? It's a hundred megahertz. It, it is because the uh, one so if the clock period is one nanosecond, then the clock frequency is the one gigahertz. Okay. So actually this hundred represents the megahertz because the time unit is one nanosecond and then times uh divide the thousand using the clock frequency. Okay. So it means that the clock period clock period is the 10 nanosecond, right? Thousand divided by hundred is a 10, right? It's the same, actually, it's the same to the clock T. The clock actually in the previous example, I define the clock T as 10 nanosecond because theory of the clock is 10 nanosecond. Actually, in this uh, example, I just define the frequency of the clock is 100 megahertz. So it is because we frequently use frequency for representing clock. So specifying clock signal, right? So we we simply say, oh, our our smartphone, our smartphone CPU works with one gigahertz of clock, right? So Samsung Exynos works with uh, two gigahertz or three gigahertz of clock. Like this. So we frequently use the frequency for specifying clock signal. That's why I show the example of the clock frequency. But in order to generate the clock signal, then we need to define the actually clock period. So clock period can be calculated from the clock frequency of this, and then you can find that. We set on the bar B signal. So, and then I also mentioned that on the bar B represents the negative signal. So, negative signal means that if the signal is zero, it means true, actually. And then if the signal value is one, it means false. And then for the negative signal, we frequently you uh, add include the on the bar B or on the bar. N, N means the negative. So, um, I don't know the meaning of B. So actually for the negative signal, we uh, include the under bar B. So which means that we set under bar B represents that this is the negative reset. So negative reset is that if the reset signal reset under bar B becomes to one, then it's not reset, okay? It's because it's negative signal. Okay, so we can initialize the clock signal and then reset on the bar B like this. And then because the reset on the bar B is the negative signal, so initially it is zero. So it means that it's the reset state, right? Because it's negative signal, okay? And then this is the delay. So after 101, Nanosecond because some is delay and then reset become not reset state, right? Because reset on the bar B becomes one. And then, you know, the clock is generated like this. So, if we also, if we require the reset signal, then we can generate the reset like this, okay? And then let's think about the input generation. So this is test bench. 
And then usually the test bench includes our design, like the key design of the test, and then clock signal will be given to the our design design unit. And then other input will be also provided to the our design, right? And then I mentioned that usually we use to design the sequential labs for uh, this uh, uh, design because uh, most most of this system is the sequential labs. Okay. Then, uh, so when the input signal is uh, given to the this our uh, design design unit, then it is provided like this. This is the clock signal. And this is the D, and then this is the Q, and then the input is actually given to the input of D flip lock. It's the D port of the D flip lock. Okay, so this, this is the input signal. Then how can we generate the input signal? So, so you can read the rule for input generation. So, what is the rule? All inputs should be applied with a small delay after the clock edge, correspond to the clock edge. Just after the clock edge, then we can add the small delay that we set in up. Input value will be changing. Okay, so that is the meaning of this rule. Why? So it is because, so this is the clock signal. Okay. And then an input signal value changed at the rising edge of the clock like this. What's the problem? You don't know. You don't know the input is, uh, Input is preceding the is a clock again. So it means the input is after the clock, or input is following the clock. Edge. So which means that if input is later than this clock, we don't know. Actually, at the same timing, the input is given to this system. But you know, in the deep loop clock, the input value will be. Sample at the widening edge of the clock. The problem is that the input value is changing at the same timing of the widening edge of the clock. Actually, we don't know the exact value, right? That is the problem. Okay, that's why we added the smooth delay to clarify the value of the this input signal. Actually, the inside of the system below, the system below actually calculates the order. So it means that the sequence of input and clock signal, but we don't know. So there, even though the input signal is given as like this, then the system below just compute the uh, order. So it means the sequence of input and clock signal, and then Actually, the flip lock will work, but we don't know the exact value of the input signal. The simulation will be uh, will will run because even though simulation will work, so we cannot guarantee the the, the uh, exact value of the input signal in this case. Okay, so you need to avoid the, this situation. Then we generate the. Test the bench, test the bench. So, like the, this. So this is the problem. So actually, uh, the at every tens, uh, tens of nanosecond, the you can observe the rising edge of the clock. The, but you know, the input is changing at the hundred nanosecond. So, so it means it means that at 100 nanosecond, the input is changed and at the same time, it's clock edge. Then, which value will be sampled? We don't know. 
So if we change it from zero to one, but we don't know which value we did set to by this one. So we need to add the small delay. Okay, so it's equal to it's a delay of so one hundred and one nanosecond. So and then it it's it's clear. So which means that uh start was zero and then you know, at, at 100 nanosecond, this is the clock edge. Okay. And then after one nanosecond, the small delay, the start signal is changed to the one. So it means that at this clock edge, the deeply clock sample is the zero, right? So we can clarify the sample value at the rising edge of the clock in this case. Okay. This is the rule. And then sampling of the output signal. So, <laughs> okay, you can also read on this rule. All outputs should be read somewhere in the middle of the clock. Okay. So, it is because also, uh, actually, uh, if if we use the deep flip lock, then you so I, I also mentioned that we usually uh, design our module by using the deep flip lock. So Q can be the the output of the our module can be the output of the deep deep flip lock. So which means that output all will output value of this is deep flip lock will be changed at the wide range of the flock, right? But if we just observe, so if we, so this is also not observe the output signal, <laughs> we also need to sample the output value at a certain time. Okay. So you not observe the, so not observe the a certain value from our system, we need to check the output signal at a certain time. Okay. Then when, <laughs> The problem is that so we use the deep flip flop, and then it means that the output of our system can be the output of the deep flip flop. So it means that the output will be changed at the rising edge of the clock. And then if we also monitor the output signal at the rising edge of the clock, then we don't know which value will be sampled. Okay. So we observe the output signal in the middle of clock period. Okay. So it looks like this. So this is the clock signal. Then output will be changed like this. So this is the simulation, not a real synthesis model. So output will be changed at the right edge of the clock. But if we just check, check the opposite signal at this point, so we don't know the exact value. So usually we check the output value at the different edge of clock signal. So in the middle of clock theory. So this is the example. You can find the negative edge, negative edge of the clock, right? So I sample the Q dot is the output of our module, and then I sample the Q dot and the sample of the negative edge of the clock. Okay, so in the middle of the clock here, we have to sample the clear and correct output value. Okay, this is the sampling of output signals. So, uh, so this is the example. So also you, so actually I provide the test bench code for your <laughs> lab assignment. So you can also find that. So this is the extension of the FSM, right? You can find that at the negative edge of the then I monitor the output of your design, right? Okay.
and then timing control. So let's see the timing control. Okay, so this is the input and output rules. And then also let's see the timing control. And I believe you are very familiar now, you are familiar with the delay control, right? The sharp, sharp symbol. And then, and then also we frequently use the S symbol, but you can use S symbol like this. Okay. And then also another uh, control is the weight. Uh, statement. So there are three different kinds of true uh, statements. So sharp uh, weight and length. So sharp means the length. You can just uh, delay the signal. And then weight means the level sensitivity control. So level sensitivity control means that, so if level means the value of output like this, or zero, one, zero okay it's called the level so and then you know the latch is the level sensitivity right and then at is the event sensitivity control so this thing is that event is that some value is changing okay like the positive as your group class that is the event so we can control the timing of our signal the test dimension, right? Using the is statement. So, and then also you, you need to mention, you need to remember that uh, the test that is in that kind of time. So, which means that this timing control statement will not be synthesized. Okay. So, we cannot use weight or sharp. You can use sharp in the, uh, this our design, but this sharp will not be synthesized, right? So we cannot use weight, okay? We, can, we cannot use weight statement in our real design, but we can use weight in the, our test bench, in our test bench, right? So this is the meaning of our tiny control, our weight Q. So Q means the, this is the our level sensitive, so we, which means that weight for two to be times, okay? So which means that, so Q can be changed like this, and then this this sequence that uh, this statement wait until the Q becomes one. So when just that the, the Q becomes one, then we goes to the next line. We go to the next. Uh, this this uh, statement goes to next line, and then you can also find the event sensitivity control and and then add positive energy plus. So what does that mean? So it means the wait until the rising edge of plus. Okay. So Q becomes one, then we can go to the next line. And then after that we this this code finds the at positive energy plus. So this code also, so this statement also wait until the rising, the next rising edge of the clock, okay? And then we, we also find the another positive edge of the clock, which means that we wait for another, another, uh, another rising edge of the clock, and then delay, the small delay, so one nanosecond, then this signal becomes one. So we can control the, the signal generation like this. So we can also use the weight or event sensitivity control like that. Okay. So also in the, in the provided test bench, we can observe the. I frequently use the, the event sensitivity event sensitivity control. Okay. Like at so at positive end of the So we can find that okay. So we think means that this statement is repeated twice at that end. Okay. So we don't need to uh write the uh, positive end of block uh twice and many times. So we can use the 
Okay, this is this is the timing control of the test bench. So so this is the example. So so this is the example of the input signal generation. So you can so so in this in this example you can find two input signals start and act. And then we um when the simulation will begin, then start is initialized as a zero, and then act is also initialized, and then wait until z of the b becomes one, right? Because it's this is the level sensitive, sensitive, sensitive. So which means that we um <clears throat> this process waits until this event is true, okay? So, which means that if the reset on the bar B is zero, then it's the reset state, right? And then if the reset becomes one, then this is the normal state, right? And this is the reset state. So, this state means that we will wait until the system state becomes normal state, right? Because we said on the one B is one and we take 10 and positive as your clock. So after 10 clock cycle, and then we wait 10 clock cycles, and then after a small delay, because this is the input signal, then input signal becomes one. Okay. So we can uh, generate uh, some input stimulus like this, right? At the uh, normal, normal, at the, uh, if the system becomes the normal state and then wait some clock cycles and then at the small delay and the input signal is changed. Okay, so we can design the test bench like this. Okay, so this is the timing control example. And actually, this is also uh, important for designing a uh, uh, test bench, right? So I also mentioned that the design, test bench design is also very critical and important. And then it will, it will be also time consuming job, okay? Because we need to design correct and efficient test bench. For verification. Okay, this is very important actually. And then usually the you know the Intel is a very good company, and, and then Intel is the uh, design company, right? So Intel just designed the CPU. And then Intel also has the design team and verification team, right? And then the people the, the number of engineers for this design team and then the verification team is really the same. Also, actually, the Intel is the international company. So, and then Intel also has the um, research lab in India, Indo. And then also the main research lab is in America, USA, and Israel. So, he means that the, on, the, on the daytime of the America, so they design a sub module, and then they just provide this module to the verification team in India. So the theory the night in America, the verification team the verifies up the, this design module, and then generate the result, and then provide the verification result to the, the American team, American team, then American American team just to fix their design, then this process is repeated. So verification also occupy the nearly the same time for this design, okay? Okay, so and then <clears throat> let's see the uh, special command for uh, monitoring. So also so for monitoring the, uh, the output, so we can use the, the special function in system value. So we can use the display function. So display function is very similar to the print as function in C and display just uh, 
performs the one nine display. Okay, it shows the one nine results in the screen on screen. Okay. So this is the example. So we can find operation is done. And then for them to be, they present that this is the decimal number. And this is the decimal number. Time is also a special uh, variable. And we typically use the dollar sign and time. Then it just reports the time, the current time of simulation. And then this is the simulation. And then another uh, monitoring function is the sharp uh, dollar. Y, dollar sign, and Y. And then actually, it's nearly equivalent to the print F function of C. So, which means that this display just displays the one nine, okay? One nine performs the one nine display, but the Y is equivalent to the nearly equivalent to print F function. So, it means that. If we want to change the line, then we need to add the end of line signal, the EOL. So actually, slash end represents the end of line EOL. So actually, in the print step function, we also add the yes, end. Uh, it's actually not, it's not slash, right? So it represents the end of line. Okay. So we can also uh, use the dialog uh, write function in system dialog. <coughs> and then another function is the monitor function. So monitor function displays the displays whenever signals change. Okay. So and then monitor function needs to be used once. Right? So whenever these signals are changing, then the monitor function uh, is uh, spread up this line, okay? So, so let's see the example. So in the FSM test which file, you can find the right, and then that right is the file right. Function right, so you know, you know that I, I mentioned that the right function is uh, similar to the print app. Okay, so as a negative one, as you observe, then uh, this right function uh, displays up a lay and B and real time. Okay, and then by the B is the binary. So this is very, uh, if we use the display or write or monitor function, then we can check the, the important output signals conveniently and efficiently because we don't need to see the number uh, <coughs> We don't need to uh, check the wave of signals. So we can just check the important output signal using the display or write function. In the test bench. Okay. And then simulation control. So we can use the start function or finish function. And then this is the uh, definition of the start function. The start means that this is the end of simulation. And then we can use the some uh, integer values for this end. So if end zero means that the message is being displayed. And then if we use the n equal one, then uh, if at the, at the, when the stop is executed, then this function brings the simulation and time and location. Okay. Also, that stop is the just stop of simulation. So it means that the simulator does not end. Okay, it's just, just stop of simulation. But if we use the finish function, then the simulator also ends. Okay, it is the simulation and it's a simulation. Okay, example. 
So in this test bench, also you can find the finish, finish command, you know, finish function. Okay. So initially, so initially so this form, this test bench you, you start at the so initial state point where is still three to nine at the beginning of simulation. Okay. So you can find the many timing controls here. Okay. And then simulation is done at this time. And then finish. Okay. So this is the uh, Simulation control function in the test bench. Okay, this is the example. So we can so Q done is the done signal, done output from our design. And then the so it means that the so Q done is checked, and then so this means the arrays and Q done. So Q done is we check we monitor the Q done and then the Q done value is one. Then stop. So we we can also control the, the start. So start means just we can just start the simulation, but but we can also control the end of the simulation by IO. Okay. So If the sim during the simulation, then we can just store the important information as file, right? So then it will be convenient. Also, I so you, as you can see, my test bench program also store some output during the simulation. And actually, so we can check your output, and then you can check your you can check the five pieces of the design. Okay. So that's why you are just to be uh helping the output file. So but we will also uh, re-simulate the your design. Your we we will uh we will re-simulate the uh, your code using the community design. Okay. Anyway. If the some important important values are stored in the file, then we can also check the file, and then it's also convenient and then efficient. So these are the file control uh, function, and then also the file control of the system value is also similar to the file control of speed. So if you are familiar with the C, then you can easily learn a system value. Okay. So you can use the F open for the file open and the F close for the file close. And then if we, if we want with some values from file, then we can use the F scan. And then and we create a string or some information to a file, then we can use the these functions like F display, F write, and then F monitor and F store. So you, you know, so you can find that. F is is the so this function starts with F because F means represent the file. So to say the example, you can you can open or well, you can you can close the file within the F open or F close. So and the, in the C program, then we just we declare the file pointer using. Right, if, if you want access file or if you want with file, then we just define the file pointer. And then you know so this type of file pointer is the file, right? But the system value we have no file type, so we use the integer type. Actually, for pointer is an uh, integer, an uh, integer point pointer is an uh, integer type data, right? So F out is so in order to define the file pointer, then we declare the F out as the integer in the value. Then you know so actually the syntax is also very similar to the F open of P. So F out so is equal to F open and the file name and then read or write. 
Okay, because I found is the point of our fine. So, so if the file is open, then we need to close the file. Okay, so as we can, very simple. So we use the file pointer, then we can close the open file. And then app scanner is also nearly same to the app scanner function of C, right? So you can find, so this is the file pointer, right? FIM is the file pointer, and then you can read the data from the file. So this is the data, uh, data type. So B means the decimal, decimal data. So B means decimal, H means hexadecimal, O means so upper, and then B means the binary. So you can use the, this statement like this. So we can use the while. While statement also so similar to B. Okay, so while and then the data in the end of the file and just repeat from this data. Okay. Okay, so this is the uh, file uh, <coughs> file control in system below, and then I will not explain about the app display, app write, and app monitor because it's a very similar to the uh, right and it display function, except the file pointer. So if we want to use the right, and we need to also specify file point obvious file pointer obviously, right? So this this line will be printing to file. Okay, so means F right required required file pointer. Okay. So we are almost done with the test bench. Okay, task. So sometimes uh, we can use our uh, same function or same task repeatedly in test bench, right? So test bench task is also similar to a function of C. So we frequently use the same function in our uh, same point, right? So it's in the, in the test bench program, uh, we can also define the, the task or function in system value, and then we can repeatedly call this task or function inside of the test bench. So this is the example of the uh, task, and then actually it's just very simple. So we can define input and output of task, and the task may have multiple inputs and then multiple outputs. Okay, so this the example task is the zero count. Okay, so this is the input signal, and then this is the output. The input and output are basically are declared, and then you can find uh, the count is, is zero, and then so we can use the full loop inside of the system level. So this is really same to the full loop of C. Okay, so this is test okay. bench. And then so I is zero and then I less than eight. I and unfortunately we cannot use I plus plus in the system level. So I equal I plus one. So then count is count plus one. So we can write this plus equal one. And then, then this test now counts the number of zero in, in bus. Okay. And then this, this count is <coughs> um, we can object uh, uh, calculate the uh, uh, we can just use the this count value if we use the this task. Also. System value has a function, okay? And then when we, when we use the function, the function has only one output, okay? So we need to declare the, the data type of function, the output type, output data type of function. Okay, this is the same function of the previous example, okay? But as you can see, the, after the function, then you can find the 
output data time. This is the integer. <laughs> then this is the function name is the zero count. Then function has in several inputs. Function can uh, have multiple inputs, but the function must have one output. So you can find that its name of function is used as the the output, the, the, the data, data type of the output of the function, the zero count is used here. Okay, the function is n is the end function. So when we also, when we design a uh, test bench, then we typically use the task one function, and then if the some operations are very difficult in use, then we can define function or we can define task inside of the test bench, and then we can just call the task or a function. Okay. So, you know, actually the test bench design is very similar to the uh, software design. Okay, so we don't need to consider about the synthesis, right? But we can put, we can also design the efficient and efficient test bench for a more efficient verification. Okay. Okay. And then this, this is the, some tips for FSS design. Okay. And so this is just a tip. Okay. So it, actually, uh, when you design an FSM, then actually you, you can find that for each state, each state will be displayed at binary position, right? At the zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one, one. So usually when we design on FSM, we use the state name, but the state name we so we we encode the with the state name in binary data. And then the, in the waveform, actually the binary signals are displayed, right? But in that case, we cannot uh, record it, it, it's not easy to recognize the, the state name. So we need to decode the, the binary signals as to the state name in our brain, right? So we can use the big here. So Actually, this that below can use string type data. Then you know the string type data can be stored in the logic data type. Okay. So if we want display the state name like field, then we can add up this case statement. Okay. Also. And then this, this code uh, will be included in the your source code, right? But but you, you may think that oh this is code. So actually uh, this code handles the string data, right? You, you may think that oh our source code, uh, some part of our source code handles string data. But I mentioned that our design need to be translated into hardware. That means that this should be synthesized to what screen data is handled. How? So this then very low and then suppose the special chroma. This is called the chroma. So then it's the special command for task two or special comment for compiler. So special comment for compiler or task two is called program. So we can define, we can uh, actually the system value can use the a special program as the, like the, the comment, right? The, just the comment, right? The comment and is that it translate or so it means that if the synthesizer detects the synthesis translate or program and 
but for this line, this at least is disabled. Okay. So which means that if we want add some very special code or some uh, some evolving code inside of your design, then you can declare you can use the this synthesis translate of program. Okay, so after this line, then this statement will not be satisfied. Okay, then you can also you can you can add up some more some statement or some code for the work. Okay, so this is the example of the, this program. This is translate all and I declare logic data type. And then uh, this logic data type is declared as the A multiplied by 16 minus one. So we can store 16 characters inside of the state of the box evoke in the data, right? And then, you know, this is the state. So, and then for each state, state evolve stores the strings and it will start type and what error. And also, if lines will not be synthesized, so after this evolving code, then the, our remaining code will be synthesized. So this is we need to turn on the synthesis. So this is so you can turn on the synthesis using the slash slash the command. Then that is translate on. So after this line, the synthesis the pet two is in the side our statement. Okay, so we can use the special program for debug. Okay, like the synthesis translate of or synthesis translate on. So if we so this data and this signal so the string data type and then then if the, this data is displayed in the or wait for so if we use the basic field name or some other uh, capsule, so we can uh, observe the string. So we need to change the data type of the, the state of the people in the variable from window. But after that, we can observe the state name in the name. Type. So this is the debugging tool because we are familiar with the strings like binary data. But for the FSM, so we just define the, the statement the, with the state name. But the state name is just encoded in the binary signal inside of the model. Then we can, we can display the state name like this. But this statement need to be uh, removed from Synthesis, okay. So obviously, for synthesis process, so we need to be on top. Synthesis translate off and synthesis translate on. Okay. So, so this is the key for the FSM design. Then I, I also explain about the several syntaxes for system below test max design. So you know actually. So actually, the system below uh, uh, supports the many special functions or special controls. Okay, so, but these these functions or these control or uh, statements are frequently used in in, in uh, test bench design. Okay. So, uh, we cannot cover the timing of the. Uh, it, we don't have enough time for. So that's the topic. So, okay, so I will stop here. Then any question? Okay. So,